Part 7 Miranda Camp Lies My parents got divorced the summer before ninth grade. My father was with someone else right away. In fact, though my mother never said so, I think this was the reason they got divorced. After the divorce, I hardly ever saw my father, and my mother acted stranger than ever. It's not that she was unstable or anything, just distant, remote. My mother is the kind of person who has a happy face for the rest of the world, but not a lot left over for me. She's never talked to me much, not about her feelings, her life. I don't know much about what she was like when she was my age. Don't know much about the things she liked or didn't like. The few times she mentioned her own parents, who I've never met, it was mostly about how she wanted to get as far away from them as she could once she'd grown up. She never told me why. I asked a few times, but she would pretend she hadn't heard me. I didn't want to go to camp that summer. I had wanted to stay with her, to help her through the divorce, but she insisted I go away. I figured she wanted the alone time, so I gave it to her. Camp was awful. I hated it. I thought it would be better being a junior counselor, but it wasn't. No one I knew from the previous year had come back, so I didn't know anyone, not a single person. I'm not even sure why, but I started playing this little make-believe game with the girls in the camp. They'd ask me stuff about myself, and I'd make things up. My parents are in Europe, I told them. I live in a huge townhouse on the nicest street in the North River Heights. I have a dog named Daisy. Then, one day, I blurted out that I had a little brother who was deformed. I have absolutely no idea why I said this. It just seemed like an interesting thing to say. And, of course, the reaction I got from the little girls in the bungalow was dramatic. Really? So sorry. That must be tough, etc., etc. I regretted saying this the moment it escaped from my lips, of course. I felt like such a fake. If Via ever found out, I thought, she'd think I was such a weirdo. And I felt like a weirdo. But, I have to admit, there was a part of me that felt a little entitled to this lie. I've known Augie since I was six years old. I've watched him grow up. I've played with him. I've watched all six episodes of Star Wars for his sake, so I could talk to him about the aliens and bounty hunters and all that. I'm the one that gave him the astronaut helmet he couldn't take off for two years. I mean, I've kind of earned the right to think of him as my brother. And the strangest thing is that these lies I told, these fictions, did wonders for my popularity. The other junior counselors heard it from the campers, and they were all over it. Never in my life have I ever been considered one of the popular girls in anything. But that summer in camp, for whatever reason, I was the girl everybody wanted to hang out with. Even the girls in Bungalow 32 were totally into me. These were the girls at the top of the food chain. They said they liked my hair, though they changed it. They said they liked the way I did my makeup, though they changed that too. They showed me how to turn my t-shirts into halter tops. We smoked. We snuck out late at night and took the path through the woods to the boys' camp. We hung out with boys. When I got home from camp, I called Ella right away to make plans with her. I don't know why I didn't call Via. I guess I just didn't feel like talking about stuff with her. She would have asked me about my parents, about camp. Ella never really asked me about things. She was an easier friend to have in that way. She wasn't serious like Via. She was fun. She thought it was cool when I dyed my hair pink. She wanted to hear all about those trips through the woods late at night. School I hardly saw Via at school this year. And when I did, it was awkward. It felt like she was judging me. I knew she didn't like my new look. I knew she didn't like my group of friends. I didn't much like hers. We never actually argued. We just drifted away. Ella and I badmouthed her to each other. She's such a prude. She's so this. She's so that. We knew we were being mean, but it was easier to ice her out if we pretended she had done something to us. The truth is, she hadn't changed at all. We had. We had become these other people. 
and she was still the person she'd always been. That annoyed me so much, and I didn't know why. Once in a while, I'd look to see where she was sitting in the lunchroom, or check the elective list to see what she signed up for. But except for a few nods in the hallway and an occasional hello, we never really spoke to each other. I noticed Justin about halfway through the school year. I hadn't noticed him at all before then, other than that he was this skinny, cutish dude with thick glasses and longish hair who carried a violin everywhere. Then, one day, I saw him in front of the school with his arm around Via. So Via has a boyfriend, I said to Ella, kind of mocking. I don't know why it surprised me that she'd have a boyfriend. Out of the three of us, she was totally the prettiest. Blue, blue eyes and long, wavy, dark hair. But she just never acted like she was at all interested in boys. She acted like she was too smart for that kind of stuff. I had a boyfriend too, a guy named Zach. When I told him I was choosing the theater elective, he shook his head and said, Careful you don't turn into a drama geek. Not the most sympathetic dude in the world, but very cute. Very high up on the totem pole. A varsity jock. I wasn't planning on taking theater at first. Then I saw Via's name on the sign-up sheet and just wrote my name down on the list. I don't even know why. We managed to avoid one another throughout most of the semester. Like, we didn't even know each other. Then one day, I got to theater class a little early and Davenport asked me to run off additional copies of the play he was planning on having us do for the spring production, The Elephant Man. I had heard about it, but I didn't really know what it was about, so I started skimming through the pages while I was waiting for the Xerox machine. It was about a man who lived more than a hundred years ago named John Merrick, who was terribly deformed. We can't do this play, Mr. D, I told him when I got back to class, and I told him why. My little brother has a birth defect and has a deformed face, and this play would hit too close to home. He seemed annoyed and a little unsympathetic, but I kind of said that my parents would have a real issue with the school doing this play. So anyway, he ended up switching to Our Town. I think I went for the role of Emily Gibbs, because I knew Via was going to go for it too. It never occurred to me that I'd beat her for the role. What I miss most. One of the things I miss the most about Via's friendship is her family. I loved her mom and dad. They were always so welcoming and nice to me. I knew they loved their kids more than anything. I always felt safe around them, safer than anywhere else in the world. How pathetic that I felt safer in someone else's house than in my own, right? And of course, I loved Augie. I was never afraid of him. Even when I was little, I had friends that couldn't believe I'd ever go over to Via's house. His face creeps me out, they'd say. You're stupid, I'd tell them. Augie's face isn't so bad once you get used to it. I called Via's house once just to say hello to Augie. Maybe part of me was hoping Via would answer. I don't know. Hey, Major Tom, I said, using my nickname for him. Miranda! He sounded so happy to hear my voice, it actually kind of took me by surprise. I'm going to a regular school now, he told me excitedly. Really? Wow, I said, totally shocked. I guess I never thought he'd go to a regular school. His parents have always been so protective of him. I guess I thought he'd always be that little kid in the astronaut helmet I gave him. Talking to him, I could tell he had no idea that Via and I weren't close anymore. It's different in high school, I explained to him. You end up hanging out with loads of different people. I have some friends in my new school, he told me. A kid named Jack and a girl named Summer. That's awesome, Augie, I said. Well, I was just calling to tell you I miss you and hope you're having a good year. Feel free to call me whenever you want, okay, Augie? You know I love you always. I love you too, Miranda. Say hi to Via for me. Tell her I miss her. I will. Bye. Bye. Extraordinary, but no one there to see. Neither my mother nor my father could come see the play on opening night. My mother, because she had this thing at work, and my dad, because his new wife was going to have her baby any second now, and he had to be on call. 
Zach couldn't come to opening night either. He had a volleyball game against Collegiate he couldn't miss. In fact, he had wanted me to miss the opening night so I could come cheer him on. My friends all went to the game, of course, because all their boyfriends were playing. Even Ella didn't come. Given a choice, she chose the crowd. So, on opening night, no one that was remotely close to me was even there. And the thing is, I realized in my third or fourth rehearsal that I was good at this acting thing. I felt the part. I understood the words I spoke. I could read the lines as if they were coming from my brain and my heart. And on opening night, I can honestly say I knew I was going to be more than good. I was going to be great. I was going to be extraordinary. But there would be no one there to see. We were all backstage, nervously running through our lines in our heads. I peeked through the curtain at the people taking their seats in the auditorium. That's when I saw Augie walking down the aisle with Isabel and Nate. They took three seats in the fifth row, near the middle. Augie was wearing a bow tie, looking around excitedly. He had grown up a bit since I'd last seen him, almost a year ago. His hair was shorter, and he was wearing some kind of hearing aid now. His face hadn't changed a bit. Davenport was running through some last-minute changes with the set decorator. I saw Justin pacing off stage left, mumbling his lines nervously. Mr. Davenport? I said, surprising myself as I spoke. I'm sorry, but I can't go on tonight. Davenport turned around slowly. What? He said. I'm sorry. Are you kidding? I'm just... I muttered, looking down. I don't feel well. I'm sorry. I feel like I'm going to throw up. This was a lie. It's just last-minute jitters. No, I can't do it. I'm telling you. Davenport looked furious. Miranda, this is outrageous. I'm sorry. Davenport took a deep breath, like he was trying to restrain himself. To be truthful, I thought he looked like he was going to explode. His forehead turned bright pink. Miranda, this is absolutely unacceptable. Now go take a few deep breaths and... I'm not going on, I said loudly, and the tears came to my eyes fairly easily. Fine! he screamed, not looking at me. Then he turned to a kid named David, who was a set decorator. Go find Olivia in the lightning booth. Tell her she's filling in for Miranda tonight. What? said David, who wasn't too swift. Go! shouted Davenport in his face. Now! The other kids had caught on to what was happening and gathered around. What's going on? said Justin. Last minute change of plans said Davenport. Miranda doesn't feel well. I feel sick, I said, trying to sound sick. So why are you still here? Davenport said to me angrily. Stop talking, take off your costume, and give it to Olivia, okay? Come on, everybody, let's go, go, go! I ran backstage to the dressing room as quickly as I could and started peeling off my costume. Two seconds later, there was a knock and Via half opened the door. What is going on? She said. Hurry up, put it on, I answered, handing her the dress. You're sick? Yeah, hurry up. Via, looking stunned, took off her t-shirt and jeans and pulled the long dress over her head. I pulled it down for her and then zipped up the back. Luckily, Emily Webb didn't go on until ten minutes into the play so the girl handling hair and makeup had time to put Via's hair up in a twist and do a quick makeup job. I'd never seen Via with a lot of makeup on. She looked like a model. I'm not even sure I'll remember my lines, Via said, looking at herself in the mirror. Your lines. You'll do great, I said. She looked at me in the mirror. Why are you doing this, Miranda? Olivia! It was Davenport, hush shouting from the door. You're on in two minutes. It's now or never. Via followed him out the door, so I never got the chance to answer her question. I don't know what I would have said anyway. I wasn't sure what the answer was. The Performance 
I watched the rest of the play from the wings just off stage, next to Davenport. Justin was amazing, and Via, in that heartbreaking last scene, was awesome. There was one line she flubbed a bit, but Justin covered for her, and no one in the audience even noticed. I heard Davenport muttering under his breath, Good, good, good. He was more nervous than all of the students put together. The actors, the set decorators, the lighting team, the guy handling the curtains. Davenport was a wreck, frankly. The only time I felt any regret, if you could even call it that, was at the end of the play when everyone went out for their curtain calls. Via and Justin were the last of the actors walking out on stage, and the audience rose to their feet when they took their bows. That, I admit, was a little bittersweet for me. But just a few minutes later, I saw Nate and Isabel and Augie make their way backstage, and they all seemed so happy. Everyone was congratulating the actors, patting them on the back. It was that crazy backstage theater mayhem where sweaty actors stand euphoric while people come worship them for a few seconds. In that crush of people, I noticed Augie looking kind of lost. I cut through the crowd as fast as I could and came up behind him. Hey! I said, Major Tom! After the show I can't say why I was so happy to see August again after so long, or how good it felt when he hugged me. I can't believe how big you've gotten, I said to him. I thought you were going to be in the play, he said. I wasn't up to it, I said, but Via was great, don't you think? He nodded. Two seconds later, Isabel found us. Miranda, she said happily, giving me a kiss on the cheek. And then to August, don't ever disappear like that again. You're the one who disappeared, Augie answered back. How are you feeling? Isabel said to me. Via told us you got sick. Much better, I answered. Is your mom here? said Isabel. No, she had work stuff, so it's actually not a big deal for me, I said truthfully. We have two more shows anyway, though I don't think I'll be as good in Emily as Via was tonight. Nate came over, and we had basically the same exact conversation. Then Isabel said, Look, we're going to have a late night dinner to celebrate the show. Are you feeling up to joining us? We'd love to have you. Oh no, I started to say. Please! said Augie. I should go home, I said. We insist, said Nate. By now, Via and Justin had come over with Justin's mom, and Via put her arm around me. You're definitely coming, she said, smiling her old smile at me. They started leading me out of the crowd, and I have to admit, for the first time in a very, very long time, I felt absolutely happy. Part 8. August The Fifth Grade Nature Retreat Every year in the spring, the fifth graders of Beecher Prep go away for three days and two nights to a place called the Broarwood Nature Reserve in Pennsylvania. It's a four-hour bus drive away. The kids sleep in cabins with bunk beds. There are campfires and s'mores in long walks through the woods. The teachers have been prepping us about this all year long, so all the kids in the grade are excited about it. Except for me. And it's not even that I'm not excited, because I kind of am. It's just, I've never slept away from home before, and I'm kind of nervous. Most kids have had sleepovers by the time they're my age. A lot of kids have gone to sleepaway camps, or stayed with their grandparents or whatever. Not me. Not unless you include hospital stays. But even then, mom or dad always stayed with me overnight. But I never slept over Tata and Papa's house or Aunt Kate and Uncle Mo's house. When I was really little, that was mainly because there were too many medical issues, like my trach tube needing to be cleared every hour or reinserting my feeding tube if it got detached. But when I got bigger, I just never felt like sleeping anywhere else. There was one time when I half slept over Christopher's house. We were about eight, and we were still best friends. Our family had gone for a visit to his house, and me and Christopher were having such a great time playing Lego Star Wars 
that I didn't want to leave when it was time to go. We were like, please, 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 can we have a sleepover? So our parents said yes, and Mom and Dad and Via drove home. And me and Christopher stayed up till midnight playing, until Lisa, his mom, said, Okay, guys, time to go to bed. Well, that's when I kind of panicked a bit. Lisa tried to help me go to sleep, but I just started crying that I wanted to go home. So, at 1 a.m., Lisa called Mom and Dad, and Dad drove all the way back out to Bridgeport to pick me up. We didn't get home until 3 a.m., so my one and only sleepover, up until now, was pretty much a disaster, which is why I'm a little nervous about the nature retreat. On the other hand, I'm really excited. Known for I asked Mom to buy me a new rolling duffel bag because my old one had Star Wars stuff on it, and there was no way I was going to take that to the fifth grade nature retreat. As much as I love Star Wars, I don't want that to be what I'm known for. Everyone's known for something in middle school. Like Reed is known for really being into marine life and the oceans, and things like that. And Amos is known for being a really good baseball player. And Charlotte is known for having been in a TV commercial when she was six. And Zamina is known for being really smart. My point is that in middle school, you kind of get known for what you're into. And you have to be careful about stuff like that. Like Max G and Max W will never live down their Dungeon and Dragons obsession. So I was actually trying to ease out of the whole Star Wars thing a bit. I mean, it'll always be special to me, like it is with the doctor who put in my hearing aids. It's just not the thing I wanted to be known for in middle school. I'm not sure what I want to be known for, but it's not that. That's not exactly true. I do know what I'm really known for, but there's nothing I can do about that. A Star Wars duffel bag I could do something about. Packing Mom helped me pack the night before the big trip. We put all the clothes I was taking on my bed, and she folded everything neatly and put it inside the duffel bag while I watched. It was a plain blue rolling duffel, by the way. No logos or artwork. What if I can't sleep at night? I asked. Take a book with you. Then, if you can't sleep, you can pull out your flashlight and read for a bit until you get sleepy, she answered. I nodded. What if I have a nightmare? Your teachers will be there, sweetie, she said. And Jack, and your friends. I can bring Babu, I said. That was my favorite stuffed animal when I was little. A small black bear with a soft black nose. You don't really sleep with him anymore, do you? said Mom. No, but I keep him in my closet in case I wake up in the middle of the night and can't go back to sleep, I said. I could hide him in my bag. No one would know. Then let's do that, Mom nodded, getting Babu from inside my closet. I wish they allowed cell phones, I said. I know, me too, she said. Though I know you're going to have a great time, Augie. You sure you want me to pack Babu? Yeah, but way down. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe.